Azri Rasid from University of Malaysia Pahang. Uh, I'll be presenting on behalf of my colleague from both University of Malaysia Pahang and Université de Technologie de Compiègne. So I'm going to present a bit on uh, basically our studies related to the thermal behavior of a particular synchronous reluctance machines. So the as you can see, the title of our presentation today is a 3D thermal model of synchronous reluctance machine with segmented rotor considering anisotropic conductivity. So let's begin. So uh, the way that I'm going to do this presentation is that I'm going to start with a bit of introduction to try to put into context uh, the problematic that we have. And then later, uh, we'll go through basically the uh, methodology of how do we construct the model and then validation of the model. And then we'll finish with uh, basically uh, showing you the result of the validation. And then uh, we'll wrap up with a conclusion at the end. So uh, for introduction, basically, uh, synchronous reluctance machine uh, is re-emerging as a, a quite interesting solution. Basically, it's because of its uh, characteristic of being a thermally robust machine. So this is particularly true for, for machines that has uh, what we call, uh, what we might call as passive rotor topology. So some of them, uh, basically, it could be a flux barrier topology, axial laminated topology, or even a segmented uh, rotor topology, right? So as we can see in this figure over here, this is basically uh, quite uh, a famous machine that we have in the market today made by ABB. So it's a flux barrier synchronous electric machine, but there are also other topology. So the one that we are dealing with in our lab is basically the one that we have at bottom here. So we call it a segmented rotor. Uh, topology. So why do we have one instead of another? It is basically due mainly to the uh, constraint of manufacturing that make it very difficult to basically to punch, uh, to do the, the, the punching of the metal sheet with all this uh, form of flux barrier. Therefore, uh, at the end, we, we have to end up with uh, this segmented rotor, right? So it is uh, much easier to be fabricated when it is in small dimension. So I need to, uh, to basically, uh, in order to put it into context, the dimension of our machine over here is basically in terms of active uh, length and diameter of the, uh, of the machine. It is basically 45 millimeter of diameter. So it's 4.5 cm. It's a very small machine uh, of around 250 watt. So in order to punch holes in the metal sheet at that dimension, it, it is uh, practically impossible. So uh, this machine, uh, this kind of machine, synchronous reluctance is very interesting due to this characteristic of uh, having basically no permanent magnet and no losses on the rotor. So it is easier to evacuate the heat that is only situated on the, uh, on the stator winding. So the only sensitive component is basically the stator winding, but nonetheless, we still have uh, the factor of risk, which is the high ambient temperature and high losses. So uh, to put it into context in terms of our application, basically this machine was designed, uh, we had the intention to use it as a clutch actuator that will be put in, uh, into a casing with the gearbox, uh, which is, will be placed, of course, next to an internal combustion engine. So you can imagine the temperature inside the hood could, uh, inside that casing could go uh, uh, around uh, 150 to 200 degrees Celsius. So this factor of risk is uh, basically there for this kind of machine, uh, despite being thermally robust. So uh, the main factor of risk is basically the insulation of the machine, where the maximum temperature for the insulation can vary uh, depending on the class of the uh, insulation of the conductors from 150 degrees uh, to 240 degrees Celsius. Uh, so um, therefore, uh, despite even, even if it is a thermally robust machine in this kind of situation, we need to basically evaluate the temperature inside the one indeed. So uh, the interest to do that is, of course, to avoid uh, the permanent damage uh, of the machine once it is uh, installed into the application. So it needs to be done during the early phase of, uh, of design, which is what we are trying to do. And then it, of course, will allow uh, a certain improvement or optimization in terms of heat dissipation later uh, when it is well parameterized. So here is basically the, the, the uh, the uh, cross-section view of our machine, uh, the design of the um, sec what we call segmented rotor that is held by a shaft uh, in the middle. Uh, so we have to basically choose a method uh, 
to, to develop this model to evaluate the, the possible temperature distribution inside the machine, especially the temperature inside the, inside the winding. So the method to evaluate this temperature distribution, uh, what we want to have is basically a method that does not involve in uh, constructing a lot of prototypes. Uh, because constructing prototype is expensive, so there is uh, there are basically two choices: either to go through finite element analysis or through a lump parameter network model. So we choose basically the lump parameter network model uh, due to less computational resources needed, less time consumed to develop the model uh, and to run the model as well, and it can be as precise as uh, the other method if it is properly tuned and validated. So this is the method chosen. Nonetheless, we still have the problematic of uh, basically when we try to do the, the, the discretization of the, the machine uh, to put them into lumps, what happens is we basically have uh, several components that are non-homogeneous and non-isotropic lumps. So this is what we're going to uh, discuss inside this paper. How do we do the modeling of those uh, non-isotropic, non-homogeneous components? So uh, in terms of methodology, what we do in order to, to develop this model is first, uh, first of all, of course, to identify the heat flux and then to identify the heat transfer mechanism. Uh, either it is uh, conduction, convection or radiation. In, in our case, we do not consider the radiation because the temperature uh, level is uh, pretty low. And then we do the discretization of the machine to put them into lumps and then uh, we calculate, uh, compute the, the thermal parameters, which include thermal resistance and thermal capacitance to include the transient phase behavior as well. And then we do simulation of the experiment simulation using the model. At the same time, in parallel, we will do an experiment on the prototype machine. So we have uh, two prototype machines. And then we do a comparison between simulation and experimentation to, to, to validate the model. So how do we validate the model? It is basically by comparing the time response characteristic of the experiment and simulation. We look at the steady state temperature as well as the time constant. And then we, we, we basically, uh, we, we say that we validate the model if the error is less than 10%. Uh, and otherwise, if the model is not validated, we'll go back to the discretization and computation of thermal parameters, try to improve and try to tune it back until it is valid. So what we can see here on, on our right hand side, right hand side is basically the lumps uh, of, of of the discretized machine and in red are basically the direction of heat flux we have the three-dimensional direction of heat flux uh, radial we have axial so this is the cross section uh, uh, on from the side view this is from the, the the front view of the machine where we can see the radial and ortho radial and here at the bottom we can see the axial direction so uh, here we list down basically the lumps that we have and then we have the heat direction it could be the three direction of the three dimension and then the, the mode of heat transfer uh, either conduction or convection so in terms of calculation of course there is the calculation of the thermal resistance uh, that will be depending of course in the form of the lumps it can be a form of extruded lump will be calculated following this formula if it is in uh, in the form of cylindrical uh, the heat travel, uh, traveling from the inside of cylinder to the outside cylinder, then it is another formula. And that's of course the formula for convection. And then we also calculate the uh, thermal capacitance. So at the end, this is basically the thermal model that we have at the end with the losses injected inside the slot uh, and also inside the, uh, the uh, core for the iron losses. Uh, when we look at this, basically, uh, as you mentioned just now, there are a few difficulties related to uh, the parameters determination. The first one is basically on convection. There is uh, the most important part is basically the, 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 the convection on the surface of the casing. So to evaluate H, the convection, uh, the convection uh, parameters uh, of convection between casing and ambient hair is uh, very difficult. There are, of course, a few uh, a few references that give empirical uh, values, but it is basically not particularly uh, uh, for the dimension and geometry that is uh, that, that correspond to ours. So we need to do what we do is basically we do an experimental identification. And then in terms of convection in air gap, this is a very uh, small uh, synchronous reductance machine. So Synchronous reluctance, we know that we need a very small air gap. We have an air gap of less than 0.5 millimeters. So uh, when we calculate this NASA number, it's very small. That, that, that leads us to consider it as conduction. Uh, 
and then there are of course non-homogeneous lumps which includes three parts the first one is slot or the winding inside the slot so inside it we have basically three uh, different uh, material which is the copper conductor and then you have the insulation and air itself so uh, that's the problematic of uh, evaluating the thermal parameters of that part and then is this uh, and then the next part that is not non-homogeneous lump is basically the stator and a rotor core they are not solid uh, ferromagnetic materials they are basically lamination where you have metal sheets of uh, this ferromagnetic material and then uh, in between you have a certain type of insulation and then uh, finally you have the surface contact of resistance so between uh, the lumps uh, especially the, the largest part is between the casing and stator yoke you have a, a surface of contact that is not uh, properly in conduction there are depending on basically the state of, of the surface we have a certain uh, what we call surface contact resistance so uh, here we present how did we uh, do all the calculation for the uh, lumps that are non-homogeneous non-isotropic so for the first one for the slot winding we use what we call uh, the homogenization method using mori tanaka equation so it is equation uh, an equation of homogenization that takes into account uh, what we call the filling factor so how much uh, copper do you have in it how much uh, portion of air and how much portion of insulation film do you have, have in it and then in in uh, in function of filling factor you can see basically the the thermal conduction of the slot of uh, the equivalent slot uh, can be increased so in our case it's basically we have a certain value uh, between uh, 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 that lead to uh, a certain thermal conductivity of around 0 0.1 and then the next one is basically the calculation of thermal resistance in three direction of stator and rotor core lamination so we can see that uh, here we can clearly see the lamination on the uh, rotor segment so uh, there is basically three direction axial direction radial direction and ortho radial direction in axial direction we have to travel the heat have to travel through basically um, uh, the lamination and the insulation so we uh, uh, whereas in auto radial and radial direction they, they, they are crossing both of the lamination at the same time so we what we do is basically we do the calculation of thermal resistance just like in series and parallel equivalent resistance and then the next one is uh, surface contact so in order to do this we convert the uh, convert the surface uh, uh, the, the surface contact into what we call an effective air gap uh, so this method has been popularized by Staten. Uh, we can find basically the interfacial uh, conductance when we know the material that we have uh, in contact. And then finally, in terms of convection, what we did was basically we did an experimental identification. We consider that a certain hypothesis were considered, was considered, were considered, I'm sorry. So at steady state, we consider that the heat generated inside the machine will be equal to the heat evacuated at the surface of the convection. So at the end, we can consider basically a one node model where the difference of temperature between the surface and ambient uh, can allow us to, cal to calculate basically the, uh, the thermal resistance of the surface uh, of the machine. So at the end, uh, you, uh, using this experimental identification, basically so at several uh, point of uh, operating point or several point of losses in copper losses alone, uh, we managed to identify basically uh, a resistance of thermal uh, a thermal resistance of convection between the surface and ambient air of around 1.6. So at the end, what we did was uh, an experimental validation. So it was done on the Sankran's uh, assessment machine test bench. So the test bench, the validation was done in copper losses because we have uh, basically found previously that 99% of the machine losses is copper losses. Um, and then uh, inside the machine, a K-type thermocouple was instrumented, instrumented in the slot. The bench was controlled by DSP, so all the parameters of current voltage speed uh, that were measured by, uh, by all the instrumentation can be monitored on a host PC. So the current that we have here is basically the same current that we're gonna, we have injected into the simulation later. And then the real-time temperature uh, can be displayed and acquisition at one sample per second. So here in the graph that you, we have here on the right side is basically the comparison between simulation and experimental data. The dotted line is basically the simulation and the, uh, the full line are basically the, the experimental data. And this three graph represent three experiments at 
at, at 3 at 14 points of different losses. And we can conclude, conclude that basically at the end, when we compare the error at transient and steady state, we have uh, an error that is less than 10%. So that lead to, to basically for us to conclude that the model, the method, uh, the lump parameter thermal model is validated. So in conclusion, uh, we can see that in this study, we have used LPTN method. It was chosen due to the compromise between precision development time and computational resources. And then to ensure precision of the, uh, the model, we consider the non-isotropic, non-homogeneous lumps. So different method were applied, as we mentioned just now, uh, for slot homogenization, lamination computation, surface contact, and casing surface convection. So the model at the end uh, is uh, experimentally validated with an error at steady state less than 2%, error at transit state less than 8%. So that's all from us. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, and please contact us if you have any uh, query or any question. Thank you again.